So, check it out. This is uh, some park. <laughs> I forget what park this is. <laughs> On the, it's it's part of Eglinton Flats. Fergie Brown Park is what it's called, and uh, it uh, it's a bunch of sports fields um, surrounding this beautiful forest and bog or whatever. It's like a marsh. Yeah, it's a marsh. And uh, I swear the deer actually sleep in there. Um, cause, and you can you can go and walk around in the marsh all the way through it pretty much on these uh, on these reeds because there's all these spots where they become so dense that you can actually stand on them. It's highly trippy, but uh, it's not quite as trippy as when the um, wow look at those colors mmm fall colors. It's, the trippy thing is when the fireflies come out. I don't know when they come out, but uh, I, uh, if I kept better records and whatever, I would have made a very careful note of exactly when I saw them here. Because at one point, I did a few years ago. That was very trippy. I'm like, wow, fireflies at night. That is super fly. So, um... To get oriented, not that it's going to help. It's uh, Eglinton and Jane is right there. So Jane is running like behind me like that. Eglinton's running behind me like that. And then there's this path that goes around the sports fields where they are outside of this beautiful forest. And uh, it goes from Eglinton to Jane over there, and then the Eglinton bike path ends right there so um yeah that's where we are and we got a magnificent representation of tree species up in here and ant species uh and when dealing with the ants the key is just don't stand around <laughs> and when you're walking through foliage uh be aware that they might be hanging out on the foliage and they might get on your body and uh, they'll give you like one bite or something and it's like a warning shot, it's like a shot across the bow. And then if you don't brush them off or move or whatever, if you're on their anthill and you don't move, then they sort of all start biting you at once. But um, once I figured out how to deal with the ants, they stopped being a a problem for me in Toronto's wonderful little, very accessible and difficult to find wilderness spots. Um, and uh, now it's not really a problem. But like, if I stand around in one spot for way too long without kind of going like this, you just have to keep stepping around. It's really, this is the ant dance. The ant avoidance dance because they are in there, right? They're chilling out in there somewhere, and they're crawling. Oh, yeah, there they are. Wait, you can see them. And they're crawling all over everything. Uh, and then there's also the mosquito issue, and the mosquito situation is just really easy to avoid if you don't. Again, like you have to keep removing, sort of can't be like standing around in one spot for a while because they will catch up to you but they suck at following people so if you need to just hang out in one place you can do a holding pattern you can like walk through three different spots in like a triangle like this and as long as you don't stand around in one of the spots for too long <laughs> Two doesn't seem to work, because then they'll just hang out at the other spot and you're just going back and forth. And then also in the forest, when you're walking around to avoid the uh, dreaded Lyme disease carrying deer tick, you just 
check your legs and uh, you know don't let him crawl on you in the first place and really spots like this are a bit better than spots like High Park or whatever for ticks because there's tons of people there so uh, and there's lots of deer there so it's just gonna attract lots of ticks but places like this where there's not that much deer and the deer are always switching spots you know they have like a lot of bed down spots for the amount of deer that there are and so they the deer are always switching it up so that they don't hang so that they're not always in the same spot so that the ticks can't really mess with them too much so if you do what the deer do and just you know this is one reason I like hanging out in spots like this is I'll traipse through the bush a whole bunch and I'll be checking and checking and checking and checking and checking and I I never get ticks on me I got one thing on me that I think might have been a tick in uh, over the course of this the, the duration so uh, and I got it off of me right away um, you have to get them before they crawl into some nice spot like your armpit or you know down there between stuff and it takes them a while to get there I guess so if you can deal with those few things the other thing about the mosquitoes is they really like the evening time that's their that's their whole thing so if you just show up before late afternoon they really just aren't out doing their thing they're like they're like me back in the day they really don't get around to doing anything until like evening time and then they're like in a huge rush to get everything done and uh then by night time it's fine again so it's like if you want to want to go make a day out of hanging out in toronto it's beautiful like look at this fucking place um wilderness spots uh you know plan something for dinner time like dinner at a nearby restaurant or whatever like right up the hill here amazing jamaican food <laughs> this is why this is why I like uh you know people are like oh you love forests so much dorian how come you're how come you're living in in canada's biggest city i'm like well because i love forests but i just hate being far away from a kick-ass grocery store you know <laughs> where i can get uh whatever whenever like i could get sushi over there and get vietnamese food over there you know five ten minute bike ride you get like i said oh my god the jamaican food and the indian food oh my gosh at weston and eglinton uh, it's so good so uh either that or like bring a tiny little super light uh tent or a bit of you know those mosquito net things just for that time so you can be like oh it's mosquito time uh and it's dinner time i'll just whip out my little picnic basket throw up my mosquito net chill out for a couple hours or whatever if you know if you have something to do for a while but uh that's like if you're doing a whole thing out of it if you're nine tenths of the time uh the typical like noob urban forest explorer suburban forest explorer um is like the mosquito you know takes forever to get out and then realizes like oh this place is it's getting dark and there's mosquitoes everywhere like yeah well you showed up after you know you showed up when you should be leaving so that's tip number one it's like get out in the you know afternoon not evening evening is just leave it for the mosquitoes during the evening but 
around this time, like, there's just a few of them, and they are not fucking with me, really, at all. Because I'm not standing around in one place for a super long period of time. In any given location, though, there will be a couple of spots that are windy enough and or sunny enough that they are clear. One of my other favorite spots near Eglinton Flats uh, features a couple places like this. Um, and I'm going to go there next, show it off a bit, but uh, like, <laughs> I was going to do this in a bunch of different little shots, but this whole forest is just so cool. I love it. So right now we're, we're kind of on the edge of the forest here. And just beyond here, you know, maybe uh, 100 meters, you know, uh, anywhere over there, right, is uh, where the forest ends and the park begins. Well, there is something on me. It feels like a bug, but it's just a little seed. This is the thing, like, the forest... <laughs> um, you can stick to, you know, clear sort of open spaces and whatever, where you're not going to have the forest splooging all over you. But I say splooging all over you because plants use mammals as part of their sexual routine. It's disgusting. They use us as sexual surrogates. Of course, plant sex isn't particularly graphic, so I guess it's not that disgusting. But the reality is... There's a whole bunch of plants who, that have, who have just jizzed on me because I walked through their orgy and, uh, and now I'm about to transmit all of that throughout the area and help them have sex. So you are going to be taken advantage of sexually by plants in these forests. <laughs> so just, uh, you know... If you don't want to have this, like, this stuff just gets itchy when you're hiking around and stuff. Obviously, you get little sores and whatever. Um, but that's because I'm a total bushwhacker, and I'll just go through stuff. Before I hit record, I was uh, spelunking around, uh, you know, around that forest uh, on the other side of the marsh here. And it's, like, it's full of, full of dead wood. As in, like, parts of dead trees or dead parts of living trees. You know, this stuff. And a uh, good thing to do in these forests is just remove it. Just, like, snap it off. Put it on the ground. You know, to make it easier to pass through, but more along the lines of, you know, this is what human beings have generally been doing and trees are evolved to make a whole bunch of extra dead wood because you know usually we're in here scraping it out so if you want to do your fellow humans and, and everyone a favor when you're in the bush just try and break down some deadfall and and just put it on the ground because it uh it's, it's our big fire risk. There's, uh, like, these forests are pretty lush. They're pretty fireproof. But when a forest like this gets totally abandoned by humans, and it's just the deer hanging out in here, uh, and the odd weirdo like me, then the deadfall builds up. It becomes actually enough to sort of make the forest flammable enough that it could just like we could have a forest fire kind of rip through Toronto in a ribbon through our ravines and whatever if they're all full of you know dead stuff so this is my one of the, my little habits is removing that type of stuff but uh, if you're bushwhacking you will get covered in this random crap it does get a little bit itchy this is why I love uh, <laughs> I love the summertime because you can feel the extreme you know, solar energy. You can feel it all around you in the forest, but the forest is cool enough you can enjoy it 
you know, it's not, uh, it's not gonna, like, it's like a nice relief from the extreme sunlight, but you also get to, in the summer, just feel all the, all the life energy that the sun is beaming down to us. So that's super cool, but I love it when fall comes and you can see a little bit more because there's just a little less foliage and you can wear long pants. That's great. Like, this is, you know, I, I do love a pair of like trekking pants that are really light, you know, and are not too warm and stuff, but uh, I'll take, you know, some nice cool board shorts. Uh, if I have to as an alternative. So I've shown off a whole bunch of cool spots in here. When you when you come here there's you, just, you know you can go across Eglinton right over there and there's cool stuff to see. And then if you haven't already, if you're here, head down that path, cycling path, to this other beautiful uh, Eglinton flat spot right on the Humber River. Maybe I will just go show it to you right now. Because why not? It's so nice today. I'm like, gosh, it's so nice outside. It's so nice. Oh, man, look at all this. Yes. So I came in through this meadow by going off the northeastern corner of the intersection here. And I think I'll leave via the same route once I find where the hell I put my bike. It's, it's, uh, it's somewhere around here. I think it's, it's like that forest. Remember where you parked, guys. <laughs> Don't be like me. Ah, there she blows. That's my sweet freedom ride right there so you know it's you can you can park on the street you know on the edge or what and walk into your favorite wilderness spot <laughs> but I like just bringing my bike right in finding a bush that isn't the bush that everybody saw you walk into uh, and just plunking it down and I've got as you can see I've got this camo stuff on it I lock it to itself you know uh, this is this is it just makes things so easy but uh, you know, that's my parking strategy if you ever find this in the forest you can be like oh that's that uh, weird youtuber okay <laughs> there she blows I found it my exit spot. I mean, my entry. Oh my gosh! Look at all this. Got to step lightly. This is so you, you want to you want to like be able to like step and then then transfer your weight, you know, <laughs> in some spot. But okay, so here we are. I'm not gonna keep filming all the way up. Can be all creepy and weird, but this is. I'm about to walk randomly out of the forest and casually onto the street. They're putting a bike lane up here, by the way. There's going to be a, a bike lane up the side of Eglinton, so you'll be able to actually get up there a lot easier. I just feel obliged to show Eglinton. I wasn't willing to hit record while on foot, but, you know, somehow being on my bike, it's like I already feel so self-conscious about cycling that whipping out a goofy little camera at the same time and talking to myself just doesn't seem as fucked up. <laughs> but anyway, this is the Eglinton Pass, which is going to go up that hill eventually and uh, that shall be nice. It's going to be Toronto's first protected intersection. Wow, this wind noise is probably really shitty. All right, I'll just... Anyway, you bike over here. And then uh, after cycling for not very long... Look at that. 
That'd be cool to live there. I think that'd be kind of neat to live there. We got this. It's like big sports slash wilderness area. That's a golf course. Very toxic. Gotta watch out for the golf courses. They will give you cancer because you can use crazy chemicals on them that you're not allowed to use in your yard. So they can be all pristine. It kind of sucks. Anyway, so you go down this spot. Or, uh, uh, if you want, like, sort of easier, there's that. You can use that spot. Where you can't see it, but there's this cement path that, that sucks, but so does this one. <laughs> so, you go down this here path. It's so bad. This is, this is the easiest way to access the most nice uh, nature spot in the area that is not illegal to be in. It's totally okay to be there. The other access point is pretty much unlabeled. It's this road over there. <laughs> I just, Toronto really de-emphasizes its nature. But yeah, this is the easy main access point into this whole area. And it's, and it's just this, this cute little informal path. <laughs> so dumb. But anyway. Okay, I shouldn't have even pressed pause because like it's right. This is this is the only actual crappy part. You know, it's like, uh, 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 uh. Oh, it's not so bad. And then you're in this spot. There's the, the golf course, and this is probably, I don't know if it's supposed to be a golf course maintenance road or whatever, but they maintain this cute path, and if you're just coming down here to have a good time and hang out and whatever, just use this cute path. It's so nice. You can just go straight in. Boom. It's just... So easy to be lazy if you're a wilderness fiend in the city. You can just like. If you keep biking here, then uh, or or whatever, then about 50 meters, it just turns into the golf course. But check it out. There's this cute little path leading to what's kick-ass little hangout spot ever. And there's never anyone here because, I mean, it's the forest, right? It's, you never know who you could run into in a place like this. It could be some man who doesn't have anybody with him, and he could be doing some terrible... and still I just... I have yet to run into those... those people. Like... <laughs> the scary, freaky people that, um... are invoked by a lot of the people that I, you know, try and pimp this place out to. And these types of places, they're like, Oh, you can't just go into the forest. But this is the, the weirdest thing you're going to run into is, just, you know, some geese or whatever they are. What are they? Couple of buddies. So this is, I don't know, this is like the primo, I think, primo hangout spot in the area where you can watch all manner of bird activities taking place along here. There's probably like a whole bunch of birds doing a whole bunch of stuff and I haven't noticed. Anyway, whatever. So, okay, so right on the other side of the river here is the 
Humber River Trail, quote unquote trail. It's a path that's paved. And that's what you are probably biking in on if you're biking in. So you'll see me here from across the way. Uh, uh, and yeah, from here there's this sort of path you can walk along pretty much all the way to Eglinton. There's a couple neat sort of hangout spots between here and there, but I think this is really the place. And then on the other side of Eglinton, there's a whole bunch of cool, cool stuff, uh, including like a waterfall uh, slash like fish jumping in the fall type of area. Um, and all sorts of cool. There's a, a weird bunker. <laughs> it's like a weird cement bunker. Um, and, and whatever. So uh, I recommend coming into this spot. Come here first. Chill out. And then check out the beautiful forests around here. Between here and Eglinton, there's like couple of gorgeous forests, a couple of neat meadows on the other side of it. Kind of gets boring. And then it gets really cool. I don't really feel like showing off all those spots today. This is really the place. This is really like my favorite spot. I think, but just because it's the best spot, it's not because I have, you know, it's not because like it's me. It's because it's, it's, this spot and this spot, like, on the other end of the this weird road here, it that, that is nice, but this is better. This is way better. And, uh... Nobody ever comes here. <laughs> people do, but, like, very few people come here. I kind of, you know, I, like, as much as I love, you know, having it all to myself, uh... Come hang out. It's so nice here. Look, see, there's 